And welcome once again this February 8th, 2013 to another impromptu edition of the Health Research Report. Well, four articles we got. First one is going to be frequently prescribed drug used in concerning ways with harmful side effects. Sometimes we never learn our lessons. Number two, sunlight may help ward off rheumatoid arthritis in women. Well, obviously, it's been something we've been trying to avoid for the past 50 years, it seems. Third, some omega-3s oils better than others for protection against liver disease. Not so much without brands, but the type of omega-3 oil. And number four, zinc helps against infection by tapping breaks in the immune system. Sounds boring, unless you don't have enough. And there's a 40% chance you don't, which means it's not boring to you. All right, let's start off number one. First article, uh, frequently prescribed drugs used in concerning ways with harmful side effects. Published in the weekly journal of drugs and aging. What drug am I talking about? Well, it's a sleeping pill called benzodiazepines. They pronounced it right the first time. All right. Here is the problem with the sleeping medication. Besides the fact it's dangerous in any individual, but it just happens to be dangerous in one particular type of individual. The woes that have COPD, also known as emphysema and chronic bronchitis. Why? Let's get to that a little bit later on. So it's basically, Previous studies have linked ben benzodiazepines, a medication class used to treat chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, to treat symptoms of insomnia, depression, anxiety, and shortness of breath. Keep in mind, it's used to treat shortness of breath. Well, you're going to ask yourself, huh? In a few seconds. All right. But consider the potential respiratory side effects and the well-documented neurocognitive side effects like memory loss, decreased alertness, falls, and increased risk of motor vehicle accidents. The higher frequency of benzodiazepines use in COPD is very concerning. Well, why? Because respiratory side effects. And who is it be given, being given to? People with bad respiratory conditions. Makes you wonder. All right. They, what this doctor did, Dr. Vozeris, which I maybe pronounced his name wrong, but it's V-O-Z-O-R-I-S, and his colleagues looked at 100,000 people, 66 years or older. Not look at each one individually, obviously, but a group as far as in the paperwork. And they had COPD. And guess what? Basically, they found that new after people were warned about the danger of it and what it does, still, that the new benzodiazepine dispensing was still common and occurred in more than a third of the adults. And here's the kicker. The use of the drug was 40% more common amongst those with severe COPD. Basically, the <laughs> benzodiazepines even gets better. The benzodiazepines were commonly dispensed to patients while they were having flare-ups of COPD. So, here's what we have. A drug that causes upper respiratory problems, shortness of breath, and so on and so forth, begin being given to individuals who have upper respiratory problems, shortness of breath, so on and so forth. Now, it doesn't really take a genius to figure out why this should not be prescribed, but it should take a genius to find out why it is being prescribed still by very intelligent, well-educated individuals, i.e. so-called doctors, who are still prescribing it to the people that need it and should be using it the least. Good question. And he said, these findings are new and they are concerning because they tell us that patients most at risk to be affected by the adverse effects of this drug are the same ones who are using it. 
with the most frequency. Makes you think about the people who are actually prescribing it. This medication will be causing harm in an already respiratory vulnerable population. And he said, in, in quote, we're talking about a very vulnerable subgroup and we may be inappropriately prescribing this medication class to those people. We, he talks as a whole of doctors. Him, obviously not because he researched it and is smart enough to know when war and his colleagues that, hey, what the heck? You're killing the same patient you're treating. Think about that. All right. You got COPD? Doing benzodiazepines? Talk to your doctor or get another one. Use of sunblock could lessen protective effects from UVB. Now, here's an interesting thing. UVB, ultraviolet radiation, B, derived from sunlight. Well, what happened was this. And this was published on the online annals of rheumatic diseases. Rheumatic diseases. Rheumatic diseases, maybe, who knows, but rheumatic diseases. And what they did was this. They looked at 120,000 nurses since 1976 between the ages of 30 and 55 in the year two, from the year 2008. And then what they wanted to do is look at rheumatoid arthritis levels. But they did something different. Where most researchers would just look at the geography and try to gauge the UVB-like projection based upon just where they live. They were one step further. They would use what's called UVB flux which is basically measuring the UVB radiation based on latitude, altitude, and cloud cover during those period of times. Now, the rating was this. 440 on the UV, on the RB units, on the UVB flux test, is enough to cause a mild sunburn on untanned white skin. And they looked at the average amount. For example, if you live in Alaska, the amount of UVB on this 440 scale, you'd be getting about 93. You lived in Hawaii, you'd be getting 196, or in Arizona. What this meant was those who had the highest exposure to UVB light, the same thing you taught or taught or told is harmful and you should be basing your body in oils to protect yourself from. Well, that same thing with those at the highest levels were 21% less likely to have rheumatoid arthritis. Those with the highest level of exposures, quote, were 20% less likely to develop rheumatoid arthritis than those with the least the analysis showed. This backs up other studies, they said, showing a link between geography and the risk of rheumatoid arthritis, as well as other autoimmune diseases, including type 1 diabetes, which, by the way, was another study which showed that vitamin D reduced the uh, likelihood of getting type 1 diabetes by up to 50% if the UVB is responsible for the vitamin D production. Inflammatory bowel disease multiple and multiple sclerosis and other things too. So, score one for sunlight once again and they said too, if you use sunscreen you do increase your risk of diminishing your UVB exposure henceforth increasing your potential risk of rheumatoid arthritis. So, think about it. For thousands of years, we had no problems with the sun until we had sunscreen. All right. Omega-3 oils, better for protection against liver disease. Some are better than others. What are the some? Well, here's the thing. If you want to rig a test to show that fish oils do no good against liver disease, this is important. Because you think about it, they're saying, according to the American Liver Foundation, and this published in the online journal of nutrition, that 25% of the nation's population now has non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. That's one in four. If you're obese, guess what? Three in four of those who are obese got it at 75%. So... It's important when they run these studies that they use the right form. Well, if you use EPA, according to their studies, well, let me read. In the research with laboratory animals, it found that EPA, remember, fish oil is EPA and DHA, it's two components, found that EPA had comparatively little effect on preventing fibrosis, scarring of the liver, or scarring that's associated with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. However, 
DHA supplementation reduce the proteins involved in liver fibrosis by more than 65%. So, if I want to run a study showing that fish oils work for the basically the preventing damage to the liver or liver scarring, I'll use fish oil that's very high in DHA. Yes, DHA, the exact same fatty acid, is responsible for the reduction in colon cancer and is incredibly good for memory and prevention of the Alzheimer's. DHA, not EPA. Both fish oils, one a little bit better than the other one. All right, so if I wanted to run a study that showed that fish oils did not work for the liver, then I would use EPA. So keep that in mind. Sometimes the knowledge of how you run a study already predetermines the income. The income. Well, the income, depending on what you want to make money from. The drugs to treat it or the fish oil to treat it. DHA, 65% reduction in the proteins that are responsible for liver fibrosis. EPA, zero. All right, many clinical trials are being done with omega-3 fatty acids related to liver disease. Jump said, jump being the, science, the researcher's name, J-U-M-P. Our studies may represent the first to specifically compare the capacity of EPA versus DHA to prevent this disease. It appears that DHA, which can also be converted to EPA in the human body, is one of the most valuable for this purpose. So you have any friends out there? Well, chances are one in four chance you do have a friend with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Make sure it gets DHA. If it's a little bit overweight towards the obese side, you may want to buy the DHA for them. When they go to buy fish oil, they don't see the DHA content on it, tell them to possibly look for a different brand. All right, after that, zinc. Good. Uh, zinc usually gets a bad rap a lot of times, but however now, this should put close that argument. Zinc helps against infection by tapping the brakes in immune response. Sounds really boring, but you got to keep in mind, what the researchers are doing here is they're trying to look and figure out what and how they can treat sepsis. All right, obviously an out of control immune system is no good. So what they want to look at to see is what helps regulate the immune system. And this is what they discovered published in the Journal of Cell Reports. The, immune res the new research suggests that zincs help zincs. Zinc help, well maybe there's more than one zinc, help control infections by gently tapping the brakes on the immune system. Not like a two-footed driver, just one foot tapping. The immune response in a way that prevents out of control inflammation that can be damaging and even deadly. Something else to think about with autoimmune diseases. The zinc then interacts with the process that is vital to fight in fact, against infection and by doing so helps balance the immune response. The team led by Ohio State University researchers also found that if there is not enough zinc available at the time of infection, the consequence includes excessive inflammation. Kind of makes you wonder because you got a lot of individuals out there that basically, what's the first thing they do when they start getting sick? They start feeling sore. The joints hurt and things like that. Makes you wonder if they're not, the body's not giving them an indicator ahead of time that they're low in zinc. Oh, by the way, the same zinc is responsible for testosterone production. It's important as you get to the end. As in this research, zinc's activity was studied in the context of sepsis, right, which I already covered. A devastating systematic response to infection is common cause of death in intensive ICU patients. But scientists say the findings may also explain, help explain why taking zinc tablets at the start of a common cold appear to help stem the effects of the illness. It's kind of a stretch, but it's in the same paragraph. If you are deficient in zinc, you are at a disadvantage because your defense system is amplified inappropriately so, meaning it goes out of control. It overcorrects itself. By overcorrecting itself, it throws your whole body off the road the other direction. The benefit to health is explicit. The zinc is beneficial because it stops the action of protein, ultimately preventing excess inflammation says zinc is a critical element that we get from our diet. But we do not think we can give zinc and uh, fix everything. Usually if there's a zinc deficiency, we would expect to see other nutrient deficiencies too. So what he's trying to say is this. All right, if you're low in zinc, chances are your diet sucks and you're low in other stuff too. But how many people out there have sucky diets or are low in zinc? Well, according to them, 2 billion people on the planet. If 
United States and you're elderly, whatever that defi definition is, 65 or older, I guess, you are 40% likely to be critically deficient in zinc. So think about that. And on top of that, they said all the zinc in your body, only 10% of the zinc that's in your body is actually used to help with the immune system or help regulate the immune system, to prevent it going out of control. So chances are, if, you, if you're over 65, 40% likelihood you're not even getting the RDA of zinc. If you've got autoimmune conditions or autoimmune problems or autoimmune symptoms, if you're constantly sore, every time you feel like you get an infection or get in a cold, you may want to look at zinc and according to them other minerals too because if you're deficient in zinc you're probably screwed in other areas at the same time but also think about this as we talked about one of our prior shows what is the one common food additive which takes zinc and just zaps it from the body you know what is it they call it the other sugar high fructose corn syrup remember when it zaps zinc out of the body it makes you very prone to um, I think was it uh, peroxidase one levels begin to decline, and by peroxidase levels going going down, your body can't detox uh, organophosphates, uh, heavy metals, and so on and so forth. So if you're low on zinc, you're screwed. So you want to not be a victim. Take a little bit of extra zinc from time to time, and try to do it with a little food in your stomach too. Because you zinc on an empty stomach, and you feel like you're on a roller coaster ride and a little nauseous. That is it for this 8th of February 2013 for another issue of the Health Research Report and I will gladly see you guys again next week and whatever articles we have by next week that'd be cool. Alright, catch you guys in a bit. Bye.